Supreme on the track. You're now tuned in to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Welcome, everybody. This is Supreme Decision, and you're listening to the Supreme Decision Legal Minute Podcast. Now, I'm going to start off with a little bit of derogatory statement at the beginning of this. Because on the last podcast, one of the comments that I saw it was kind of interesting to me was from someone that I really never seen before. But they thought it was a great idea. To get to the point. Well, the one thing I also didn't see was a cash app, a donation of any sort from this, even a thank you, which is available on the YouTube channel. You know, to send a little donation. Because generally when someone is making a request, you know, or wanting to act as a boss, they have to pay their employees for doing so. So the point that anyone would like me to get to at the start of any podcast or any video or don't like the way I'm doing something, you might want to put your money where your mouth is. Now, with that being said... I want to get into today's lesson because it's about manipulation. Many of us actually sit down and we go through different aspects of life for the most part. And we think that there is something more grandeur that we're facing when in fact it's the most obvious thing and it's the most prevalent thing that we are experiencing on a day-to-day basis. Many of us use it as programming. The programming itself is manipulative. It's someone injecting an idea into your life or your passage, your being, your podcast in order to gain some form of control or some semblance of Implanting an idea and actually making you believe that it's your idea. And that's what today's podcast is called. The Inception Podcast. Now, most of you will look up the the, the Webster Dictionary's definition of Inception and begin. It means at the beginning. Well, that's where our Inception begins. At the beginning. Because when you become a quote unquote American citizen or you become someone that is born or at birth on a quote unquote U.S. land, the programming of citizenship begins. This is also done when we're talking about the ideas that we believe that police officers are good people because of the uniform. But police officers believe that they have authority because of the uniform. Both ideas are part of inception. Because it's been placed into our being, into our mentality from the beginning. And no one's actually ever stood up to actually make sense when they're challenging these ideas. Because even when you're talking about on a biblical level, God and Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, El Diablo, many people think the fight, oh, they're fighting for your soul. He wants your soul. They actually tell you in the Bible The fight is for your mind, your mentality, your implementing or exercising your known judgment. You also understand the pausing for dramatic effect because I I gave you something to think about. 
The fight isn't in between good and evil isn't for your soul. It is for your mind. So when we're talking about inception, it's the implanting of an idea. Because that was actually one of my favorite movies. And I actually spoke about this once before because I have a friend. And there was a scene in the movie that I it just it just always continues to play out every time I think about it or every time I think of something and then I have a conversation with him because it's almost deliberate now. There's a scene in the movie where Leonardo DiCaprio, he's having a conversation with his right hand man and he tells him, he says, Hey, how are we going to accomplish this? Because you know, that flight, we only have this much time and we have to do this. There's a Asian businessman that comes into the scene and they're explaining to him, yeah, we're going to have to rent out that flight. We're going to have to pay off the crew in order to get this done. The Asian businessman said, I bought the airline. I felt it was necessary. Same idea. One had expounded on it. Same idea. One saw the exact same situation in a more grandier light. I'm going to get to the point in a second. I often look at things from a guy who's made six figures several times, you know, doing it illegally and legally. I go to a guy who's made seven to eight figures multiple times legally and illegally. We'll talk about the exact same thing, but we talk about it on different levels. Now, when I talk about things such as Inception, and I talk about Copaganda, remember how we go to the beginning? In Copaganda, the video that constantly was taken down, and even it was um, Amanda Ruffins, it's actually Amanda Ruffins' video where she goes in depth and she explains the programming, the fight for the mind, how you've been inceptioned that police are good people because we're programmed that they are good people because we're watching it on TV since the 1960s. Now, the problem is those that are becoming police officers are watching it since the 1960s. So they believe the things that they are seeing because I actually told you guys about when I went to prison. One of the things the guys told me, say, hey, don't get caught up in the trick box. And I was like, what is a trick box? He said, that television, because it's going to tell lies to your vision. Because a lot of us always have been told, believe what you see, not what I say. Or none of what you hear. So now we're watching something. The problem is we haven't gotten into a habit of not listening to what we're watching. We go into a lot of our situations either as, an, as being abused. A lot of people co create a, a type of PTSD from that. I'm actually one of those people who've created a wall where it's almost, uh, what, what's, what's the word, the, the sociopathic when it comes to police officers. Because the level of abuse, the amount of times I received it, I have a numbness whenever I'm speaking to them. So I don't look at them the same way I have. I actually don't look at them the same way as anything other than another human being. The problem is they took an oath to be a servant. And I treat them as a servant. I, and I expect them to act accordingly. Because I understand their duties. The problem is I treat them like a servant and I understand their duties so I don't speak to them from a place of fear. I speak to them and about them in a place of solidified knowledge, understanding, and execution. But that was the reprogramming. I understood that there is no spoon. Because it wasn't a spoon that's been, you can't bend that. That's impossible. It was my mind that bent. Because again, I was told all my life, you listen to that police officer, he's a good guy. You listen to that police officer, he's a good guy. He look at him, he in that uniform, he, he's a good guy. But I understood 
from 16 years old, that same good guy was the same one kicking me in my chest from a traffic stop. However, there was also a same good guy that was telling me to take my behind home because they're in the middle of an investigation. They're getting ready to arrest your ass. And I know you didn't do it, but they're not going to listen. Same uniform, different behaviors. Same time when I got out of prison, I'm going from place to place here. You're so overqualified. Why do you want to work here? You're so overqualified. Why do you want to work here? You're so overqualified. Why do you want to work here? Because I'm not afraid to get behind that gun and take what's yours. That's why I want to work here. And it was also one of those good guys, Andre Jackson. Officer Andre Jackson, who got me a job at a bank. Who made sure for the next 20 years I did not get in trouble again. He didn't say I wasn't going to get arrested again. He made sure I didn't get in trouble again. I wasn't doing something stupid again. Understand. It's not the uniform that creates the problem. It's the ideas of what they expect us to believe from the uniform that creates the problem. It also distorts the image of what's in that uniform. If you're not cognizant and open to understanding what it is that's supposed to be done in that uniform. Because even when we're talking about this programming, it was the most amazing thing to me. I had a conversation with a young, young lady the other day. A little Caucasian lady, and we were down at the um, what is that? The Hotel de Norte. It's actually a very nice place. If you ever come to El Paso, great place to stop, great place to shop, great place to eat. Also has bomb coffee. Now, her and I was having a conversation, and she brought up, well, you know, slavery is not really an issue because it was so many years ago, and I actually laughed. I said, really. She said, yeah, you know, the slaves were freed and, you know, they stayed and did this. And, the, the, and I asked her, I said, did you understand Jim Crow? She was like, well, you know, that was, those were certain things that were just in one place. I was like, no, it was pretty much engulfing the South. I said, did you actually even know in 2022, November, that slavery was still on the ballot? She took a gasp. Slavery is on an election ballot, but again, she's part of a world where slavery isn't part of her normal. She's part of a world where her mind is tuned to something other than actualities. My skin tone doesn't allow me to not know that slavery was on the ballot in 2022. But here's the great part about it. I'm going to say something to y'all. There's a lot of people that's going to listen to this podcast that did not know slavery was on the ballot in 2022. I'm going to give you another one. Slavery is still alive and well in Louisiana. Because that was the only state that did not um, vote to abolish slavery. Because most people that are going to vote have no idea what they're voting on. Because nobody reads the bills that they're voting on. And nobody that's pushing these bills are talking about them. Because they understand if I give you a good show, I tell lies to your vision. You're not going to hear anything I say. Because even when I talked about sales, I told you everybody. Tells you how to sell them. Because everybody's favorite talk topic is themselves. Now, why is that important? Because to be a good salesman, you have to hear. To be a great salesman, you have to have the art of listening. There's literally a book out that's the art of listening. Because it is a learned behavior. Is very seldom practiced because all I've been talking about, everyone has the right to remain silent. Very few have the ability to remain silent because everyone places themselves in a in a manner of importance. 
greater than the situation when in fact no one cares about you other than you. Because see, no one's listening to that. But we live in our a society that tells you you're the most important thing in the world. The earth revolves around you. The programming is becoming detrimental. I'm going to give you another form of inception because, again, as me and this young lady spoke, I asked her when the slaves were free. She didn't know. I smiled and I said, uh, I said, do you um, remember the Emancipation Proclamation? She said, yeah. I said, you, did you know when it was done? And she was like, well, yeah, when Abraham Lincoln was president, I did you know when that was? And she was like, well, I, well, I'm not sure. I said, well, yeah, darling, that's the 1800s. I said, but I'm pretty sure you know Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And she sat up. I said, because they were around in the 60s and 70s. We were still having civil rights issues in the 60s and 70s because even in North Carolina, on the way to Myrtle Beach, if you're coming from the South, there's a little town that has a sign. No niggas allowed. In Fort Valley, Georgia, there's a day called Nigger Day. But see, when I talk about these things, those that are not privy to this information think it's okay because the inception of it, because the programming, the ideas, the actual giving of what it is that makes you who you are is now being challenged because you're trying to bend the spoon when in fact that's impossible. Because any idea I give you, I want you to make it your own. I want you to believe that you are the one that came up with it. That way you can be comfortable with the outcome of it. You don't have to know the reality because I'm giving you one. And these are the things that most of us have very, very little idea what it is. Now, I, I keep saying slavery, 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 inception, 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 inception. Let me do something. The United States v. Kosmonsky, 487 U.S., 931, and it's a 1988 case. The United States Supreme Court finds that involuntary servitude, slavery, involuntary servitude in certain, because remember, I always told you words have power, but also you have to understand changing the word does not change the context. Because when we learned back in the day in actual social studies, we knew about indentured servants. Remember that? Because even when I read the police officer's oath of office and the Georgia State Constitution, they are in service to the people. They are servant to the people. They are fiduciary to the people. All of those mean the exact same thing. When we're talking about in layman's terms. But the United States Supreme Court finds that involuntary servitude means a condition in which the victim was forced to work by the use or threat of physical restraint, personal injury, or by the use or threat the law or the legal process provides. I'm going to say that one more time because most of us don't understand the context of it. The United States Constitution and the Emancipation Proclamation, which is an announcement, made it illegal to hold someone, even three-fifths of a someone, and any, meant any um, idea of involuntary servitude. There is no such thing as a debtor's prison, yet people go to prison for the, a, a default judgment in the guise of contempt of court in the guise of not paying child support. People go to prison for a debt 
Because we look at something like probation, which is supposed to be an alternative to jail, as something that's a contractual obligation that you defaulted on. Whoops, because even Georgia B. Bearden made that illegal because there is no debtor's prison. But when I talk about the use of threat by physical restraint, most people don't think about those that have been wrongfully convicted being held in a tin can in 110 degree weather in Arizona, which is a dry heat. So basically you're slow baking or even a young man that was in Alabama that slow baked to death because he was sitting in a cell that was 120 degrees. Even his, um, what do you call that? Public pretender stated he went to visit him. He said he opened a mail the, the meal flap. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give people an idea. Many of you go to restaurants and you get this little serving tray, right? It's probably about two feet by three feet. Actually, it might not even be that big. It might be, let's call it 14 by 20. There's a slot a little bit wider than the 14 inches. There's a little bit higher than two and a half, maybe three inches wide. In a flap that is designed for that tray to slide through, the public pretender stated the heat was so engulfing that he couldn't stand it and he was on the outside. But we look at because they're in an orange jumpsuit, because of the programming, that that person that was in that jail was there for a reason. We forget about the bail reform. You remember that? The bail, the bail reform. We're going to stop all these people. But then we look at out of 2.1 million people that's involved in our prison system now, 840,000 of them are there because they can't make bail, not because they've been convicted of a crime. I'm going to say that one more time. Out of the 2.1 million people that's involved in our prison system, 840,000 of them are there not because they've been convicted of a crime. It's because they can't make bail. But we're programmed to believe because they're there, they've done something wrong. But then I go on to tell you that the FBI states a police officer is not trained to solve crimes and they make a mistake three times out of every four decisions. If I was dropping fries at McDonald's and I messed up the fries three times out of every four times I cooked them, I would not be able to keep my job. Do you realize that's 75%? If every time you got a dollar, I took 75 cents, you would not be happy. I'm going to say that one more time. If every time you got a dollar and I took 75, took it, I took 75 cents from you, so you're working for 25 cents, you would not be happy. But then we excuse the actions of someone just because they're wearing a uniform. But oh, wait, there's more. We see video after 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 video of these police officers that are in these uniforms not even knowing what law is. They use stock language. Why would they give someone with the ability to articulate a means to not articulate if they're intelligent. Why would every police officer, no matter the police force, no matter the state, the city, the county, say the exact same thing if it's not part of the language itself? Stop resisting. You look suspicious. 
Well, I, I am here lawfully because someone called me. I have to do this. Yet when you ask them for that code that they have to do, which means that must be etched in their brain because they have to do it. None of them know it. Because here's the great part about it. People always talk, well, well, why don't you just comply? I could. I really could. But then I could also go back and refer you to the 103 people that I named that were executed that complied. Or I could talk about a couple of podcasts ago where the young man sitting in his car complied, Sean Bell. Or I could talk about the man that was laying on the ground who the police weren't even looking for. Or even kicking in the wrong door like either... um. Was it Charles Hawkins and Amir Locke? Or I could go through the plethora of police officers that have planted evidence on people that were complying. And it amazes me. We know they're not intelligent because even us as people, when we see someone become a police officer, we never say, That guy is super smart. He's a good cop. No, we say they became a cop because they got beat up all the time in high school. Nobody liked her. Uh Uh-oh, they power tripping. Because again, they've been programmed to believe they have power because nobody's read their state's constitution which they swore to. Nobody's read the organic code, which they swore to uphold. Because it's amazing to me whenever I repeat these things to a police officer. And I work for Dallas County. Well, that's funny. Your oath of office says you work for the people. I work for the police department. That's funny. The police department is nowhere on your oath of office. It's also nowhere in the state's constitution. You know, the things that you swore to uphold and defend. How is it that you're going to do that when you have never read it? But here's the great part about it. The inception of it. Because they've been programmed to believe something and then when we don't fight back we don't question because that's what we're programmed to do not fight and not question just comply and give in even though these people can't get it right 75 percent of the time and i love to point out see the lies you've been told Even whenever you do challenge, point out, and even bring up. That's wrong. Where did you get your law degree from? Well, you don't have one, so it doesn't make a difference. Because the thing is, you're supposed to know law, and if you don't know it, that means you're incapable of enforcing law, which means you are incapable of doing the job of policing. Which means you now lose qualified immunity because you don't have the ability. Whoops. And that's from their department. That's from their oaths. That's from their law. So when I give you ideas and I talk about the inception, the program, because even even one I had with my my, I, I, I don't even know how to even say this. I have a friend. He's super black. He has black power this. He's black. It, like, we actually had a conversation how Superman and Batman was racist. It was the most entertaining thing I had ever heard in my life because he was serious. And I informed him that was a great conversation because he was serious. But... I asked him a question. And I asked him his ideas of critical race theory. And he was like, well, critical race theory and is 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 
is intricate because, and he went through this long diatribe of wow, it's intricate. But what was interesting was I followed that up with, what about the Confederate statues? Now I'm going to do something because I'm going to dumb down for my audience so I can double my dollars. I'm going to let you criticize me for it, but you're going to all yell holler. But here's the thing about it. When I asked that question, he was gung-ho at getting rid of the statues. Watch where I go with this. When we talked about Inception, right? We talked about the program. We talked about the battle for good and bad is for the mind. We actually walked, talked about going to things and accepting things as they are because of the programming we have been shit bombarded with since birth. Right? Since the inception. Now, D.O. Hughley spoke about something. The most dangerous place for a black man to be is in the mind of a white person. Right? It was a great book. I encourage you to read it because, again, it talks about the ideas because the realities are separate. So in conjoining them, it becomes dangerous because One's reality is not the other's. And even when we talked about the statues and critical race theory, he didn't understand that there was a bigger play at, at hand. And I smiled. And so he asked, he said, well, what's your idea? And I said, here's the great part about it. I said, you ready? I said, they do things. I said, because they'll get you upset about something, right? I said, yes. He said, that's how, that's how they do you, brother. So got it. I said, do you understand the context of Inception? It's giving you an idea and making you think it's yours to basically to explore a greater agenda. Because if you remember, Leonardo DiCaprio said we have to go several levels down in order to make the idea stick because he still has to come up with it. Now, I'm going to tell you that these statues are racist. They are a reminder that you are you were a slave and that you, well, you weren't a slave. Your ancestors were, you weren't. Right? Let's 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 catch that one. But they are a reminder. They're history. So now, because of your dark skin, you have to get rid of all these slave owners. Let's get rid of all these slave owners. Knock down all these. Statues. Let's get rid of everything that reminds us of slavery. Now we talk about critical race theories because now we have no actual reminders of the of the horrible history. We also talk about how horrible the white man is for rewriting the history. Now, by getting rid of the statues, we're actually aiding them in getting rid of critical race theory. We're actually aiding them in rewriting history because now. If you look at a social studies book, they're writing out slavery. They're writing out the bad that they've done. They're writing out everything, and we're accepting it because we're participating. Whoops. Because if I take it out of schools and you don't have any visibility of it, I'm going to give you the great part about it. I love to talk about Thanos. But there was a point in game where he made a speech and it was the most. You know, I actually smiled when he made it because it made the idea of the sense it made because it mirrored what's going on with the inception of the critical race theory and the getting rid of the statues. He says, I'm going to kill off all of those that knew better. I'm going to get rid of everyone that knew better. He said, because the new generation will have no idea it existed. See the lies you've been told? I'm, gonna say, I'm going to kill off everyone that knew better. So the younger generation will never know it existed because I'm going to rewrite the history of it.
and you're going to help me do it. That's inception. The idea of not fighting back, no competition, not everything that's masculine is toxic. All of those are part of the inception. If you have any aggressive, oh, that, that you're just toxic. If you're competitive, oh, you're, 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 you're toxic. Everyone is a winner here. Yet, no one carries that same sentiment when it's time for a bill to be paid. Oh, I'm going to give you another one. When we talked about the ideas and the acceptance, we even weaponize the things we know that are detrimental to us against those that are trying to prosper. I'm going to say, we weaponize the things we know that are detrimental to us against those that are prosperous. Because if you're entitled to it, it's easier to be bought. If you don't have to work for it, there is no suffrage. There is no connection. If I then separate you and everything goes online, I've told you for the past hundred years that human touch is the essence of life. It's the qualifier what makes you different. It will allow you to elevate yourself. But now I'm going to tell you touching someone is detrimental to you. Because that goes against my agenda. Because even whenever I talk to people, it amazes me the amount of people that don't understand the psychology of fear. Because they would rather try to project it onto someone else, but they also look for other things to blame. And they think saying, I'm not scared means they are actually not scared when their actions. Did here's the thing, because one of the things, the reason why I talked about the sociopathic ideas that I have towards police right at this moment is because men lie, women lie, words lie. Because they all don't believe in anything you hear. Watch what you see. What are they showing you? Because your body People say, well, I, I really can't lie to anybody because it's going to come out in my face because your body has certain reactions. What happens when there is no reaction? Because there's no, remember, the law of conservation of energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred, and that transfer can only come from the outside. What if there's an outside disturbance that does not change your energy state? You're called sociopathic. Those are things that I actually have a controlled mechanism with. In certain situations, I think my body should respond in a certain way when I have zero reaction. That scares me because it then means that I am losing connection. I am losing touch. I am losing humanity. Or am I losing someone's ideas of connection? Am I losing someone's idea of humanity? All of us have a bit of inception that we need to kind to kind of get rid of. Being prosperous in certain aspects allows us to be better at others. Being vigilant of certain aspects allows us to understand how to move forward. Because people always say the great motivator is fear. Most people are programmed to be fearful. But when you start rejecting that programming and your body starts accepting it, the inception becomes full circle. 
because it is no longer an acceptance of your outside circumstances. It's only those that are being connected with on the inside of you. Because it's easy to know. Because knowing is half the battle. Once you know what it is, you either accept it or you become Mr. Regan. You become an actor. You become Agent Smith. Or you go out and you understand that there is a sacrifice worth making because it's greater than yourself. Because history can only be repeated when it's not known. History isn't bad unless you make it bad. Hiding it does not help you move forward. It only creates more disillusionment. What we have to understand and recognize is the bigger picture that's being played because most of us are trained to be short-sighted. We are in a microwave society. We want everything instantly. We want everything done now. But the simple thing is, what's the entire picture? What's the entire picture? Because even when we're sitting in our homes, they're feeding a vision to us. Many of us are not even looking at it. But even in that context, even in that space, even in our own separations, we accept things as we think they should be, not as how they are. And we cannot expand our mind to buying the airport because we felt it was necessary. 